Good afternoon everyone, this is Reading for Charity again, and um, today it's going to be, sorry, <laughs> lost what I was doing there, I was thinking about something else. Uh, today is going to be Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch, which is the continuation of the Loch Lamora trilogy. Um, this one is going to be relatively super fast, because an awful lot of what I said for Loch Lamora, uh, The Lies of Loch Lamora, works for this book too. Um... It's very, very, very much a continuation of the uh, of the previous book. I mean, to the extent where you know they kind of arrive, <laughs> whereas they're leaving on a on a boat at the end of the last book, and they kind of like they're here in the port they were aiming for at the start of this one. Um, I always wondered how you. I need to go look up the pronunciation of uh, of. Of uh, Locke's friend in this one is it Jean or is it Jean? Which one should I be calling it? Um, I'm going to go for Jean because that's how it's written, but it could be Jean. But anyway, so uh, in this book, uh, Jean and and Locke are basically full on oceans oceans elevening this book uh, a, a casino. I mean, <laughs> that's that's the extent of this story. Um, the two of them are. Basically, going for a massive, big, horrible con um, to steal everything they possibly can and get away with it. It's the kind of the perfect crime. It's the uh, it's the it, it's the plot of Ocean's Eleven. If you've ever seen Ocean's Eleven, go away and read it. Go away and watch it. Come back and then read this book and you'll be like, oh yeah, it's Ocean's Eleven. It's the unstealable fortune from the casino that no one's ever managed to rob from, which is the setup for Ocean's Eleven. And then the con, um, the, the the con men who are going to do it, and it's 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 there. And then there's a uh, a piracy plot thrown in, which is relatively pointless. Um, the the uh, bonds mages of uh, oh, I can't remember the name of their city. The bonds mages are back in this as well, and they're just as irritating in this book as they are in the. Uh, the lies of Loch Lamora in that there's absolutely nothing you can do to stop them. Um, it was it's the one it's the one annoyance I, one of the big annoyances I have in the first book, which is you know if you kill one of the Bonds Mage, they will kill you, your family, your city, everyone you've ever known, loved, everyone who might have ever come across you, anyone who's ever brushed up against you in the street will die because you killed the Bonds Mage. And, it's, and the trickery in the book is, aha, but we didn't kill him. We just chopped off all his fingers and uh, took out his tongue. So he cannot do magic again. But we didn't kill him. I was like, well, it, does that mean that they're not going to wreak revenge on you? It's like some sort of mystical contract. And I was like, oh, you didn't kill him, but you just made him completely useless. Guess we'll let you off the hook then. No, no, they still would erect vengeance upon you because you're... You've, you've still mangled and messed with one of the Bonds Mages. It, it, it was so annoying in the first book. And it's again... In this one, they, you know, they, they mess around with the Bonds Mages and it's like, no, they're just so much more powerful than you. They would just go, done, right, next, move on. We'll find someone else to do this for us. It's really annoying. Really, really annoying. And everything I said in the last lot more <laughs> basically counts for Red Seas Under Red Skies as well. The, 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 the world building is excellent. The characterization is brilliant. I love Locke. I love Jean. Uh, Jean, John, Jean, 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 John, which all, whichever pronunciation I'm switching between the two of them simultaneously. Um, I love the characters. I think the 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 betrayal and the the stresses are very forced. Um, it's kind of like I'm trying to remember which author it was. Um, one of the authors I really like wrote saying that they didn't know what the characters were were going to do when they sat down to write. It might have been Stephen King. Um, and he would write and write and write and then he would read it back and, and go oh I didn't think they were going to do that and I think that's a really natural and excellent way to write because um, you're writing down events as they happen and the characters will surprise the author and if they surprise the author they're definitely going to surprise the the reader um, Scott Lynch I think writes backwards I think he he's, he feels like he's a top down writer he sits down with a, the grand plan and sketches it down and then writes titles of chapters and then fills in the title chapters with synopsises and then fills the synopsises up with text and then fills the, the text up with dialogue and then fills the dialogue up with adjectives and then you know ties it all together that's how it feels at times reading Scott Lynch um and 
it feels like somewhere in the chapter there was it, there was a chapter heading you know the strained friendship or the betrayal or and then he wrote the text to get to that point um because it does feel very forced it's the, it's it's the minor annoyance that i have in this book is the you know the deterioration of the the friendship between uh jean and Locke, but they still keep going they still keep working together and uh, in the end they'll get through it well they kind of don't <laughs> it kind of other than unlike oceans 11 um it's got much more of a <whistles> ending to it um but it's an ending that's designed to lead to a third book um which is um which is you know the, the, the third part of the trilogy so um Anything else I would say about this book, I think has pretty much already been said um, I, by myself in um, The Lies of Lot and Laura. So, should you read this book? Red Seas Under Red Skies. Um, yes, you actually don't need to have read The Lies of Lot and Laura. Unlike a lot of fantasy trilogies, despite this is this being the middle, um, the middle chapter of the trilogy, you don't really need to have le read the opening. The opening is a really good... Um, introduction to the characters but because they basically step out of the world they were in and into another one very little of the world building applies um you really only kind of know need to know you know vaguely who the characters are that the bond mages exist and that uh lock really 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 annoyed them and that's genuinely all you need to know for the second book it's a good read um i don't think it's as good as the lies of lock lamora but if you're reading them definitely read them um in terms of where this goes against the other sci-fi that uh, other fantasy books that I like to read, um, it's kind of it's it's definitely below the, the Brandon Sanderson's. It's definitely below the um, the Stephen Erickson's. It's kind of alongside um, what's your name, Trudy Canavan. I'd put it round about Trudy Canavan. If you kind of like the Trudy Canavan stuff, um, this is this is roughly roughly around that level, I think. Um, but yes, right. The next one, the next one we'll review is the Republic of Thieves. Which is the third part of the Loch Lamora trilogy. Um, that will be next in five minutes once I find the uh, uh, the relevant cover gif. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Reading for Charity. Good afternoon. <laughs>